Another shape you might be interested in creating in vPython is a ring. Maybe you're doing a, uh, the electric field of a charged ring. Maybe you want to represent a loop of current. Maybe you want to represent uh, a planet's circular orbit. Maybe you just want to make a fun little design with like some, some hanging rings or a chain or something like that. Well, to create a ring, it's actually pretty straightforward. You just use the ring function over here. So when I run this, it'll produce this ring. Now you notice we're looking at this ring from the side. It kind of defaults to that orientation when you don't put any arguments in here. So you might be wondering, how do I get this thing to rotate around? Like how do I make it point like facing you like this instead of like this? Because it, it creates it like this. You can't actually tell that it's a ring. Um, it might seem a little counterintuitive, but you're actually going to use the axis property. Now we've seen the axis before on things like cylinders. Uh, let's actually maybe review what that looks like on a cylinder. By default, it points this way. It points toward the uh, positive x direction. So for example, what if I wanted it to point upward instead of rightward? I would use the axis property. Because it's kind of easy to imagine a vector being the axis of this thing where it's pointing to the right. But if I change this, let's make it a 0, 1, 0 so that it's pointing along the y-axis. And now it's pointing upward. And I can even change that if I wanted to to be the z-axis, I can have it pointing... Oh, I didn't save yet. <laughs> I can have it pointing outward toward you, the viewer, coming out of the screen. But let's go back to this problem over here. What does it mean for a ring to have an axis, right? Like, what is it? How do you associate an axis with this thing? Like with a cylinder, I can understand it's the direction the cylinder is kind of pointing. But it might not seem intuitive how a ring points somewhere. Well, let's maybe get a little bit of insight. Let's call this my ring equals ring and then ask to print my ring dot axis. It looks like this thinks it has an axis of 1, 0, 0. So the same that it defaulted to for the cylinder, it has an axis pointing to the right. And so what you have to imagine is that there's a little arrow kind of pointing out from here, from the center, that kind of points outward perpendicular to the ring itself. Or if you're comfortable uh, with uh, the right-hand rule in physics, you could do a curly right-hand rule around the circle and get the direction that your axis is pointing. You can even see this align with the cylinder a little bit. If I make this cylinder a bit smaller and give it its default axis here, right? you can actually see that that cylinder is pointing out of the ring. And so that's kind of a nice way to visualize what this axis property means. So what that means is I should be able to change axis in here to something else, maybe get a 0, 1, 0. Comment this out. And lo and behold, the cylinder points upward, right? It's kind of difficult to think of this as something pointing, but you can think of it as like the, the, the axis is pointing out of the ring, or you can think about it as something was rotating along this direction. The axis would be the axis of rotation. You can actually visualize this really well by having a cylinder and a ring, or maybe an, uh, an arrow and a ring. Does arrow use radius? Let's find out. Uh, you could do zero, one, zero. Okay, it does accept a, a radius there, or at least it works there. Uh, or you could even lock them together, right? So I could make this my ring.axis. So now it's going to pull the same thing it prints here in for the uh, arrows axis, which is kind of a cool way to visualize that. Uh, so now if I change this axis, maybe I make it diagonal. You can see they rotated together, right? So this, this, uh, the axis vector rotated this way and then the ring rotated a similar 45 degrees there. So that's a nice way to visualize that. Um, there's a few other properties on the uh, ring function that you can change. For example, I can change the radius. Uh, let's make this easier to see. Let's give it a Z axis axis. Uh, oh, right, radius, I need to say radius equals something. Uh, let's make it radius equals 0 0.1. Right, and what that is changing is the actual like radius from the center outward. 
It's kind of difficult to see the change in this right now because the the screen always scales appropriately. But what if what if we put this back to one and we change the thickness ourselves? Because by default, the thickness, the actual cross-sectional width of this here, um, is usually 0.1 times the radius. So this is what it would be by default. What if I left that thickness as a fixed quantity there and I made the radius itself like a half? Now we'll be able to tell that this thing has gotten smaller because that's the same thickness there. Uh, let's see what happens if we keep making that smaller. Right, so you notice that basically this inner width is getting smaller while this outer width is staying the same. What happens if we make that just two times the thickness? You can see that hole is starting to close up. You can probably imagine what will happen if we make this make them both the same thing. Lo and behold, we just get a tiny little pucker <laughs> there in the in the center. Kind of a cool uh, kind of a cool shape there. Let's see what happens if we make the thickness thicker than the radius. I wonder if it's defaulting to not letting it overlap. Like what if we make this even bigger? So we do like a 0.2 or something. Oh, yep, yep, that little indent in the smaller is in the center is getting smaller. Although I do see uh, there's a little bit of pixelation around the edges. I wonder if we're kind of breaking <laughs> the shape there. All right, well, that was fun. Let's put this back to a one. Um, as with any shape, of course, you can change the position. So maybe we move this over to the left a bit. That's cool. It moved it over to the left part of the screen. Uh, let's add a second one over to the right. Call it my ring two. Yeah, let's move that one to the right. I think the oh no, they're not going to touch there because they're they're farther apart than there. Let's see what would we need to do to get these to touch. If they have a radius of one, that means they need to be a distance of two apart. Yep, we can get those rings to overlap just so. I guess we want them to be. If our radius is 0.2, we want them to be 1.2 across to get them to touch. Just barely graze each other. There we go. Look at that one teeny tiny point of contact there. That's kind of cool. I guess you can make eyeglasses out of this. Um, and then like any uh, any shape in vPython, they can have a color. Color equals color dot red. Color equals color dot green. There you go. You can make some cool little decorations out of these things. Let's actually do one last thing. Let's give an arrow for each of these. So we'll need to give a color to each of them to match. Copy, paste. My ring two. My ring two. I'm leaving off something important here. Maybe you can guess what it is that I'm leaving off here that these things are going to need. I've actually left off the position, so we've got a red and a green arrow kind of overlapped right there. Uh, so we'll need to change the position to be myring.pause. Copy and paste myring2.pause. All right, let's give that a go. And so here you can move these things around, and as long as you keep these two things, uh, these two arrows set up this way, you can always see what those axes are, right? So maybe you, you turn this one to go uh, upward just a little bit. And so now you can rotate these things around and you can always visualize what that axis is.